In this screencast I'm going to show you how to estimate the physical properties of pure components uh, from group contributions and the equations and the numbers that I'm going to show you are taken from the work of Joback and Reed 1987. Now the physical properties that can be predicted are shown in this column here and the equations that we need to use in order to do that are shown here. Now each of these equations has different parameters, different terms. Um, all of them include this sigma uh, value and sigma is the sum of all the increments for different uh, groups that are in the compound. So I will show you the values for those in a moment. Um, sometimes there are, there are additional terms in these equations, so sometimes there's temperature, that's temperature in Kelvin. Sometimes there is Na, that's the number of atoms in the molecule. Um, so we can work that out as well from the sum of the atoms in all the different groups. Um, Tb is the boiling point. And so you have to just take into account all these different uh, parameters. Now, the increments that we have to use are shown in this table here. So for the critical temperature, there's a whole host of different increments that we need to consider for different groups that might be in the molecule that we're interested in. And we have to add up these groups. So if there's a methyl group, we have to add in that value. If there's an alcohol group, then we have to add in that value. If there are several CH2 groups, say there's four, we have to have four times that value and add that up. And then that will give us the sum of those increments that we can then use uh, in for that sigma term there. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. This is dichlorobenzene, and we have the molecule here. And so if we scroll down the spreadsheet, we have to have four of these CH groups with a single bond and a double bond, two of these C groups with two single bonds and a double bond, and we also have to have two chlorine groups. And then what will happen is that the that number will be multiplied by the increment value from the increment sheet and that will happen for all the components and then they will all become they will all get added up at the bottom here so that is the sum of the increments so that's going to be our sigma value now if we come up here the estimated value is worked out based on that value um, so we have 0 0.584 plus 0 0.965 times sigma minus sigma squared and that's all raised to the power of minus 1 and multiplied by the boiling point and that gives us an estimated TC. So if we go back to the theory we can see that that's that equation applied actually in the spreadsheet. And then this is done for all of the other components or the other properties that we're interested in and again it's a case of each of the increments being multiplied by the number of times that group appears in the molecule and then the sum of those uh, increments being added up and then again we apply the equation and for this uh, molecule we have some experimental data and we can see that there's a reasonable fit uh, a reasonable estimation of the physical properties based on the experimental data that we've got in the spreadsheet now if we want to try a different molecule then we just change the the groups that are present and then we can come up with new estimated values um, and then we can do that for all sorts of different molecules so there's examples here for pyridine um, and other, other various molecules so uh, it's just a case of changing the groups that are contributing to these values so in summary that is how we can estimate the physical properties of pure components based on group contributions